So I've got some A's for your sorry cues. Illustrations by B. Oh. Wait a second. I didn't realize my cuff was not flipped. That's that's better. Do you have any idea how many videos I created with a flipped cuff? It's like my trademark. I'm finally going to do the question and answer video. It you know it takes me a little time because I get the questions. I've already recorded multiple videos. I have them waiting to be published. So it takes me time to develop that new video and then get it to you. But thank you so much for actually sending in questions. I've asked that on other videos a while ago and I got almost nothing. But now I've gotten some questions. More than happy to answer them. And that's what I'm going to do here. Also, as a special treat, I, I found my... It was sent to me. My old artwork from when I was three, four years old. I, I was always an abstract artist. I had no idea. And so what I'm going to do is go through some of that art, show you. I've got my first sketchbook. I was three for my first sketchbook. I, I just, I was an abstract artist. I migrated into representational uh, painting and drawing. I didn't know I did that. And now I'm back in abstract art. It's like a full circle. I was always there. I should have been developing that. I went this way and did some stuff over. That was fun too. I'm do still doing that stuff. It's still fun. But I'm back over on this side doing a little bit more abstract stuff here on YouTube. So when I'm answering the questions, I'll be showing you that stuff too. First, I'm going to show you some artwork that I did and show you where I'm getting my inspiration. Then I'm going to start creating the piece and start with the Q&A section. All right, let's get into it. Okay, so here's my first ever sketchbook. It's more of a color book. I was learning color with crayons and paint. You'll see that in here. Now, I didn't do any of the drawings. This is just me doing the color part. I was always good at staying in the lines. Do you see that? That's how most of my art looks now. And these are all just regular objects, but here's the real, this right here is the money maker in the whole thing. I may still sell this, I was three years old, painting abstract. Look at this. It was just an abstract piece. That I've drawn stuff and painted stuff that looks just like this, and I've never sold it, but it, it could have sold. I may still sell this. I'll put this up. I'll put it on sale for like $500. Then I did a Valentine's Day card to my mother. I did not write any of this. This is the hold your hand when you're small and then see how big it grows. Anyway, this is my artwork here. This is very similar to the last video with the shed, only I slammed my hand from the paint onto this. So I was on the right track the whole time. I should have just dreamt bigger. When I was three, I should have ran into the shed then. Could you imagine how far I'd be now? Okay, so this piece is just to show how I've developed from September of 82 until June of 83. And this is what I was drawing in September of 82. And then this is what I developed into in June of 83. Do you see how much better that looks? And how it looks like some of the stuff that I do now I'm, I may steal this and reuse it in a newer video because this is just amazing. It looks very similar. This just shows my creativity at that point to write stories. Now, this is not my handwriting, but they wrote down what I told them to. So if I were a giant, I'd be a giant dog and I'd have a big tummy and eat mice. And this is my representation of that. It's my abstract representation of it. I think it fits perfectly. It, it rivals many things I've seen hanging in galleries about a, what an idea is and then what the painting is. I was already doing that. This is a tree. Now look at all the things that go off. I do this now in my art. This could be a pattern that I've already drawn in a book with all the little things coming down and the mass at the other side. It's just how it looks. I, I, the same stuff I do now. This shows my mental state at the time my new friend and I probably had better conversations with whatever this is than I did with most of my classmates at that time because I was talking about art and they were picking their nose so it's a different thing 
that we're talking about. So this was the friend I had to make to have the art conversations. Now, I think this is pretty creative. The, the, the camera's picking up the eye. It's pick, putting a box on the eye. It recognizes it as a human being. This is my new friend, and now this is my old friend. Here's an abstract piece I did of a yellow dog. This is what I think a yellow dog looks like. Just like when I do the birds and I do them abstract, I was doing that already. I should have stayed doing it. I don't know why I changed my art style. I was three, four years old. I already knew how to do it, and then I stopped. I don't understand. It was because I thought I was older. I was more sophisticated, but this is the yellow dog. So this is interesting. I was learning to cut paper, and instead of actually cutting the paper, I just put little spots on it that made it look like I cut my finger and bled on the paper. So I think that was pretty inventive of me to do something like that. I got an A. This has nothing to do with art, but I just wanted to show you in case you want to know why kids are depressed, because this was my field trip schedule. I had to go to a fire department, which was cool. The library, that one was cool. Then we went to a post office to brainwash us to see you just sit in the same spot filing papers all day and you better be happy with it because that's what it is to be an adult. And then a visit to the dentist so you get used to them drilling in your mouth and giving you shots and things like that. And that was also, it's very depressing for a child. They have some excitement and then you lower the excitement, but it's still pretty cool because there's a lot of cool books at the library when you're a kid. They don't do that anymore because we don't need them, but we used to have to go to the library to get a book, and then they just beat you down more and more. So from January to March, I became increasingly depressed, and you can see why. This is my first neurographic drawing, and I just, I didn't put all the lines on it because I didn't have a pen, so I just glued down tissue paper instead but it's basically the same thing then they told me that they were proud of me because my circles were so round and i decided oh yeah well then i'm not going to do that i still back then i still did that they told me to do something and i was like screw you i'm gonna do this so this is not circular neurographic drawing this is like jagged neurographic drawing it's probably because the memories of the dentist and the post office created these jagged memories in my neurological cortex and so this is what i did here i am continuing down my mass delusion i told them i was thankful for my dog and my cat which i drew here but their drawing is exactly what they look like because they were imaginary i did not have them so that's it and this brings us to today so i hope you enjoyed that look down my troubled past now this i want to start out i've never drawn with a bent nib before on a fountain pen so I wanted to do that so I bought one not very expensive just a couple bucks these they came in a full set of nibs for this black forest fountain pen I and I love this pen so I just went ahead and I put the diamine twilight ink in there so it's a little water soluble and here's the concept here for this drawing is basically I wanted to draw something that I could also shade but have permanent lines as well. So I draw the outline and some of the sections with the fountain pen with the water soluble ink and then I go back in with a fine liner and put in all the details and those don't move when I add the water. You'll see how that works out as I continue. Okay so we have questions. I'm very excited. Let's talk about them. Um, we have here it says Christy asked, have you ever tried negative space painting? No, I have not. I, well, no, I can't say that. I haven't tried a full piece. I've done little thumbnail sketches and things like that of the negative space painting. Um, I've also drawn and then filled in the rest with like dark, thick black ink. But in painting, that's different. Drawing is a little different. The painting-wise, I've never really tried the painting thing. I think I get, would get a little frustrated. That's why I started painting with gouache a lot, the white gouache, because I just sucked at the negative painting thing. It is very interesting. I enjoy trying the little thumbnails when I do them, and sometimes you just do lifting or something like that. But for the most part, I've never really just concentrated on a full piece. Right on says, who inspires you? That's interesting because I have so many influences in my life from my mother to grandmother to Bob Ross to 
uh, other artists. I love watching Marty from Owings Art. I love watching his sketching. I love watching Mind of Watercolor. The, the man, Steve, is, is just a master at what he does. He just does something, and it looks good. And he's like, oh, I messed that up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? If you sat me down at a table for 30 years, I wouldn't be able to do what you just did. I couldn't even imitate your mess up. So it's just he's great at what he does, and I love watching him paint. It's just amazing. Peter Draws is another channel. I love watching. He really got me interested in the abstract drawing part of it. A big influence for something like this, like what I'm doing right now. Definitely, I love watching where his mind goes when he creates things. And he has a couple different styles that he does. But he's just a master at what he does. He does it so well. He's He knows, okay, I'm going to do little weird things like this today. And it just, the whole drawing just comes out just like that. And almost like everything was exactly where it was supposed to be. Like he had it all mapped out in his head. Even though he doesn't. He just draws and wherever his pen takes him, that's where he goes. But he's just good at it. And I appreciate him really piqued my interest for this kind of drawing. Daniel Podvin is another channel on here. I love watching him draw his portraits. They're so gawky and weird and just look like cartoony, but they're nice. They're very, they're very detailed. I just, I love watching those. There are so many artists. I probably cannot name them all. Um, I love just watching other artists paint. And as long as they're not being pretentious and telling you to, you know, oh, you got to draw like this and you got to hold the thing like this when you do it. And I don't like that, but I love watching people do things. Alfonso Dunn is also one of my favorite just inkers. I just love watching him ink pieces. And that's kind of where this piece actually was inspired by. I just wanted to draw the outline and then draw a lot of hatching and that kind of stuff. It's hashing, but I'm using hatching because that's what most people understand. And I just love watching him do that because he does so many lines. You think, man, that just looks so cluttered. But when you look at it, it's perfect. It's just, oh no, I understand where every line goes and what it is and what it's showing. So I uh, love watching his artwork. Lisa from Lock Fine Art. I love watching her stuff. She She's an amazing artist that can do anything. She can draw, paint anything with any medium, and it just looks nice. And I like the surreal art. I like that she does that. It just gives you ideas like, oh, I want to put something like this sometimes in the middle of something that has nothing to do with it. And she's good at that. She plans that out very well. She understands the concept of how to frame things, and, and it's just very nice. There are two other artists that just draw and they just they blow me away when I watch them. One of them is Kim Jung-gi and he, the, his perspective and the way he draws is just amazing. He just starts from anything. He sees it in his head. He has an amazing memory. I think that's what he said his secret is. He just sees something and he remembers exactly what it looks like detail for detail. And he just goes ahead and draws it. And the other one is Karl Kapinski. He is amazing as well. Does a lot of like fantasy stuff when he does drawings. I love watching him draw as well. It's just fun to watch them, just their whole process. It's, it's amazing. So another artist I absolutely love is Peter Scheeler. His line and wash. I love watching his line and wash. It's some of the most inspirational thing. When I do line and wash, any kind of uh, landscape stuff, I try and mimic his style because it's just one of my favorite things to look at. I, I think it looks very, it looks simplistic, a little bit cartoony, but also so much detail and just everything looks nice. And also, I, I know I'm going to kick myself for missing somebody and I, I don't want to just keep rambling on with all these people, but uh, I also have to mention James Garney because he is the master of gouache. He can do it all. And sometimes his process drives me a little bit nuts because I'm looking at it saying, James, that looks so ugly. What are you doing? By the time he's done, it's a masterpiece. It looks perfect. It's exactly what he was looking at. So I get it. He's he's just good at what he does. And I also quickly want to mention Kendall Hilligas because she just she's an illustrator that I she has such a positive outlook on everything. And I love watching her work because it's so precise. She has a process. She follows it every time. And it just always comes out looking great. And she just is a very upbeat person. She has great art advice. I, I love listening to her. 
Minnie Small is another artist that I love watching, the way she creates and how she goes about things. Um, she could do a lot of different styles, and it just always comes across. She's so calm, so pleasant, so peaceful. You, it's almost, if you just put her on, you can fall asleep to the sound of her voice because of how calming it is. But when you watch her videos, it's exciting because of the artwork. So I love watching that channel as well. All right, I could talk forever about people that I enjoy looking at. Basically, if you go on YouTube and you look at art, those people inspire me. More so than older. Like, I love John Singer Sargent stuff. I love the, the difference in the... The depth, the Rembrandt, definitely the, with the light and the shadow. I love looking at those pieces. I don't do those pieces. I just like the contrast of those pieces. And recently, when I went to the Biltmore and saw some of John Singer Sargent's work, actual work hanging, and I can look at it in front of my face, I was just amazed by it. It's absolutely beautiful. Is that enough people for you? I know I forgot plenty, but I'm just going to stop now. Let's get on to the next one. Right on also asks, do you draw in your profession or is it a hobby? I will tell you that it is, I'm trying to make it my profession. Right now, I guess technically it's a hobby because I'm not really being paid to produce the work much. A little bit. I have a little bit, but not much. So it, technically it's, it's more of a hobby right now, but I'm treating it as a profession because I eventually want to do this all the time full time and i love doing it so it's kind of it's not my professional life right now but i want it to be linda asks are you a baseball fan yes i was at one point i am currently i don't watch baseball but i played baseball when i was younger i played uh, little league for three years i was a catcher i absolutely loved it um it's I, I, we were a mets house we were it was on Long Island, we were in New York Mets house, and so we watched the Mets all the time. My stepfather would turn on the game and be yelling at the top of his lungs at the TV, and the whole neighborhood would hear everything. They knew what was happening in the game because of it. Very fond memories of that. I was able to bond with my stepfather over that. We used to play ball, go around the neighborhood, get all the kids together, play a game down at the baseball field. It was always a fun thing for me. It was just something that took some of the other stuff away from my childhood that I didn't want to deal with because I could focus some energy into that. So that was fun. Uh, stopped doing that when I was uh, not that old. I just stopped uh, out of Little League. I never went any further. Uh, but I was always a baseball fan. I used to watch them, like I said, watch the Met games and all that stuff, go to the games and have fun and, until about uh, early teens and then that all changed and there was no more baseball in the house that was different that's another story and um, but up until that point I did and then uh, my wife and I both started watching when, when we got together we started watching baseball once we were married we were like yeah let's put on a game and started watching the Mets a little bit and that lasted for a little bit we'd have it on in the background but it, life gets busy, and we moved away from that. I don't really follow any sports right now. Sandy asks, how do you organize your time to do as much art as you do, as well as general life? That's very interesting. It's so difficult. I have a couple of videos up on the channel about that, about managing your time and, and finding time for art. Basically, I take the time. When I am done with work during the day, I come home, I like to spend time with my wife, we spend time together, and so sometimes either later that night for maybe an hour, or if I'm sitting down we're just hanging out, I might just grab my sketchbook and start sketching a little bit while we're outside in the backyard with the dog, or maybe if we're even if we're just sitting on the couch and the TV's on and we're just I'm just drawing a little bit, but really my the main focus of my time for art goes into Friday night and Saturday night from about 10 o'clock at night until uh, up to four o'clock in the morning. That's generally how much time I'm putting towards art and, and developing these videos. So uh, two days of that, and then during the week I do a little bit here and there. You have to carve out that time. It doesn't just happen. You have to make it a priority and say, this is when I'm doing this and nothing is gonna get in the way of that. And when things do come up, because of course it's life and things do come up, you then have to carve out additional time somewhere else to do that. So it's just, I know it's difficult, but it can be done. Sometimes 
I take a sketchbook with me in if I know that we're going to go out somewhere and I know that my wife's going to go into a store that I'm not going to want to go into, I'll hang out in the car and whip out my sketchbook and start uh, sketching some stuff. That's different. Like You could find those areas in your life to just have one with you, just a pen with a sketchbook and just take it out and just start, or a pencil, whatever you like to do, and just start just sketching. Regina asks, what inspires you the most? I would say without a doubt, nature inspires my art the most. Looking at other people's art does as well. I mean, looking at uh, what other people create does help me get ideas. But really, when I look at nature and I'm just looking around saying, wow, that looks like an interesting shape. I wonder if I can just draw it or paint it and then add detail to it and make it look like something that is just otherworldly, has nothing to do with anything. That is really what I like to do. So that's where I find that inspiration. Now, there's a young lady a fifth grader who asked me this question, do I do 3D drawings? Well, it's kind of like this. There are several different things that could be 3D drawings. I think I know what you're asking me. I think you're asking me about when you put on the 3D glasses and you have the, this, the handle, the game controller or whatever it is, and you paint in 3D space and you can actually see it through the glasses 3D. No, I've never done that. I want to try that, but I don't know how much I would enjoy it other than just doing it, you know, kind of for fun. I don't think it would become something that I would try and do seriously, just have some fun with it. But there's also 3D drawings where you do things that look, if you look at a certain angle, it looks 3D. And I have done some of those drawings and they're not, I, I like them when you see them on film or I, on film. I'm, I'm not, I know I'm old. So just when you see them in video, I understand like it looks cool that way, but in real life, it doesn't look cool. It looks kind of dumb. And even if we can tilt it at the right angle, it just, you're not going to hold it at that right angle. So it, it just, that's different. I've done that, but I, I don't really enjoy that much. The other is you get like one of those little 3d printer pens and you draw in three dimension with the plastic, the melted plastic, kind of like, it's almost like a glue gun, but it lets out the plastic and it comes out a little bit stiffer. So you can actually draw in 3D with this colored plastic. And I've never done that either. It's something I may want to do and try. But again, I don't think I would be doing it seriously. It's more of just something I would like to try. Christina asks, what are your thoughts about us abstractors? Now, she invented that word. No one can take it unless you credit her. Abstractors is anyone who does abstract art. I think that should catch on. I think that's a good word. That's we could call ourselves that. So uh, about us abstractors practicing realistic sketches or drawings. Okay, so here this can go both ways because many times you hear about people who draw realism or at least representational realism and then they do some abstract stuff to help with their creativity. And I will tell you that you can do the exact opposite. If you draw realistic sketches or realistic drawings or paint realistic stuff, it also helps you with your abstract stuff because it shows you in a more practical way what the textures and the shapes look like and how they're developed. And then you can import that into an abstract piece and add something that looks like feathers or something that looks like a jagged stone or something into an abstract piece because you drew it in actual in a, a realistic representational piece or even where you uh, maybe draw a tree and you have three different shades of paint that you're putting in the highlights and the midtones and the shadows you can transfer that information to an abstract piece and it will help you do it because you there's nothing abstract that you can look at a photograph and copy but there is something representational that you can. You can look at some realism and draw a landscape or paint a landscape and then say, okay, I wanna take some of that texture and some of those shapes and import them into an abstract piece. You can do that. So yes, I think that would help tremendously and vice versa. You can do it the other way as well. Draw something abstract and just develop a certain type of texture over and over and over and then bring that into a more realism piece where you're so used to drawing that kind of texture. It's very easy when you go to do it for, for something that's realism. So that's my answer on that one. I think, yes, you can do that.
Uncle Noodles asks, what is your day job? Does it interfere or enhance videos? And is there a conflict of interest between the two? Or maybe art is the day job. So no, that is not my day job. My day job is I am a, well, I have a very complex position. So it's I'm at a lighting company. It's a smaller company. I'm the purchasing manager. I also help to run the entire rest of the company while the owner is currently away. They're, both owners are older, uh, husband and wife, and they've been dealing with the company for a very long time and they're taking some time away. They're trying to enjoy some things. So I'm managing that for them and doing the purchasing as well and then also help him to manage. He has several off-site properties and myself and another gentleman who uh, used to be the production manager, we work together on managing those outside properties and helping them make sure everything works well. If they have any questions, they contact us instead of the owner, see if we can help them out. Um, but I am very blessed. Uh, my whole life, I have been a blue collar worker and uh, do not have a college education at all. I, high school is it. I, I took a couple classes for some accounting classes just to do some stuff for uh, little side businesses that my wife and I had started and I wanted to be able to be a little more competent with my accounting skills so I took a couple classes but no real college to speak of and so um, I was in you know I started out working in factories glass factories machining factories that kind of stuff did that for a long time went to a warehouse, became a warehouse manager, did that for about 10 years, moved to this company as the warehouse manager, and then, or I'm sorry, as the shipping manager, not the warehouse manager, that was a different guy. So as the shipping manager, and then they needed someone in purchasing, and uh, fortunately for me, I do pick up kind of quickly with work, and I always, you know, my number one motto is, I give them 110% the first year. No matter what I'm doing, I give more than I can, if possible. And that's what I do for the first year. And then after that, we negotiate where I stand in the company. And that's where I do. I always try and do more than what's expected of me. It's just just in my nature. I like to do things properly. And I like to be correct when I do them. And I like to improve the thing once I understand it. So that's what I do naturally. And the purchasing agent said uh, that was retiring said, yeah, I think he's the only one that could do it. So they brought me into that position and um, I've been there ever since. And I also do some light, light engineering for them, not like uh, building and design engineering, not actual engineering. And so I work with electrical engineers and, and put them into my designs that I see fit. And then so well, I do a lot of stuff at the company, but um, but that's what I do. That's my day job. So no... Uh, art does not interfere with that. As a matter of fact, it just helps me because sometimes I'm trying to figure out how to do something and it just, my imagination is active all the time because I do the art stuff so I can figure some things out. So sometimes I guess it helps, but definitely doesn't interfere. Lady Druna, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, I apologize if I'm not, asks, would you be interested in doing a favorite art supply video? If not, what are your favorite art supplies? It's a good question. I did the last video that I did, and I did it before she asked that question. I should have to put it after this. Anyway, um, in that video, you see a lot of my favorite things, but that's really to get going when it has dollar signs attached to it. I would like to do, I'm going to do an art supply video with no dollar signs attached to it, so it's not like a kit for this much or a kit for that much. It's just my, what are my favorite art supplies that I use and I will probably be doing that soon. Thank you for that idea and I appreciate that. She also asked a question, are you sticking to the art you make or do you hop art styles from time to time? I, I like to do a lot of different things. So I do the abstract stuff, that's what you see here on YouTube mostly. Uh, but I also love just doing the standard line and wash, um, like landscapes or animal art, bird art, um, animal portraits. I love doing that stuff. And the, so between the landscapes and the animal portraits and animal art, that's really my, that was always my favorite thing to do. And the abstract stuff is just something I've added in the last couple of years. So that's where I, I do that here because it's, 
it's just something that I'm exploring. It's something that excited me when I started doing it and I became excited about it. So I wanted to share that. And so that's what I do here. But I do a lot of other stuff. I love sketching more than finished pieces, no matter what I do. I love doing sketches of landscapes or trees or plants or just nature stuff, animals. I love, that's my favorite thing to sketch. And I do it in all different styles. I do it in the line and wash. I might do it in acrylic. I might do it in more like a, a more of a realistic representational with maybe some gouache where it looks like real and there's no ink at all in it. It's just tries to make it look as real as it can. So I do a lot of different art styles, do some cartoon. I love doing character sketches of people but I don't, I'm not very good at it, but I love doing it. I love to just sit there and I pull up on Google, I'll put in like angry faces and I'll just have them all pop up and they're all over the, and I just, one right after the other from left to right, just keep uh, drawing them out and sketching them. Only taking a couple of minutes to do each one, not a whole big one, just a small little thumbnail of every face. I love doing that. I think that's fun too. So thank you for all those questions. I, I love that I, everyone participated and I got those questions and that's wonderful. I love to talk about the things that you want me to talk about and answer things that you want me to talk about. It, it's, it's nice. So like I said, this was just a shape that I put a ton of contour lines on in all different directions. And you can see that and I think it gives it some interest. This is something you can do if you're not sure exactly what to do, you can just draw out a shape, put a couple extra lines in, and then fill it in with contour lines everywhere. And then if you want, if you do the water soluble ink on the outline, you can go back in there and, and use a water brush and just get some of that color out into the shadows or something like that and do this. It's fun. It's, it takes a lot of time to do this. It, it wastes, uh, I say waste, it doesn't waste time. It takes the time. It's more like a time waster is what I was trying to say, where if you just have time to do something, but you're not sure what to do, just start doing one of these. You'll have, you'll take up plenty of time drawing all those little lines, but it's fun and it's satisfying. And at the end, when you look at it, it looks like you did so much. You really didn't. Really, this, it looks so complex and so complicated. It's really nothing to it. It's just some lines with a bunch of contour lines in there. And so that's what I was talking about, Alfonso Dunn. He does that very well. I'm not claiming to do anything even close to how good as he does it at all. But you can do that in abstract art. Use his principle in abstract art, and I think it works out well. So we're at 1,000. I'm very excited about that. I, I just can't tell you how excited that makes me and how satisfying that is to see that I got there. It's just the beginning. It's not an end to anything. It's just getting started. Now, here's something that I will do. I want to do a second channel. Don't worry. It's not taking the place of this one. This one is going to keep the same upload schedule as the primary channel, but the secondary channel, and I was waiting. I promised myself I have to wait until this channel becomes monetized. That was the deal that I have with myself. Then I start a second one talking about how I'm creating this one. So it'll talk about things that I want to do, some behind the scenes stuff, stuff that maybe people that click on these videos don't want to hear, like the gear that I'm using or what did I do that worked that didn't work. Maybe you want to start recording and, and make a you uh, an art channel and you don't know exactly what to do. I want to help you do that. I'm going to explain everything I'm doing and just share that with you. So I'll let you know when that comes out, when that's coming through. But thank you so much to everyone who made the thousand possible. And we're going to just keep going as far as we can from here. Don't get me wrong. This isn't going to be some weird guru channel. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just sharing my experience, what I'm doing, if it's working, if it's not working, what happened. Like the last video, I don't know what happened. It was, it came out and or two videos ago came out and it did terrible the first day. And then the second day it did like 10 times more than any other video has ever done in a single day. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just having fun and I'm just going to share those results with you. And I might share some things like cameras and gear and things that I like to mess around with just because I like to mess around with those things. So I'm just going to be, and they're going to be short 
videos, just vlog style. I'm just going to talk and that's just it. It's just going to be over. So this channel keeps the schedule. That channel is not going to have a weekly schedule or anything like that. Just when I can make a video, I'm going to make it and it'll be there. And I'll probably start the channel with maybe five or six videos right away. So there's something to see, but that's about it. Okay, so thumb up the video if you are no longer watching and you shut it off when I started going through my childhood drawings because you were uninterested and you never were even going to hear what I'm saying right now. That's okay. Don't worry about that. But I'm going to go and I'll see you in the next one.